Yeah, if he his ability to be able to do that away from Mark Hughes, uh, he'd be a far, far in more ineffective player. But uh, you know, he broke away on the left. I wasn't sure if he'd, he'd take the chance with his left foot. He doesn't often get the early cross in. Pullet was crying out for it at the far post. It couldn't have been better weighted. It also says something about the position that Hullet has found himself in in the Chelsea team these last two or three months. He came, you'll remember, with people expecting him to play as sweeper. Then he played in the sort of engine room of the midfield. But in these last few weeks, he's been encouraged to play up with John Spencer behind the striker, Mark Hughes. And goodness, it's paid off today. Now, can the Frenchman reply in kind? Here he is, Cantona, leaving it for Key. Now he's going to get it. In the way is Andy Myers. And Hullet, so elegant, as well as being effective. Just look at that. As he said in one of the interviews, it's only a semi-final. Here's Johnson. Definitely one of those, you just look at the pitch as he went to cross it, uh, a dreaded shinner, and it's a, a goal kick for Manchester. But Hullet definitely looks to be fences playing in a cup final at Wembley, doesn't he? So tall and elegant and strong, can't be knocked off the ball, just makes that bit more time than any other player seems to have. Well, Manchester United, a goal behind. I think Jimmy Hill was uh, making the point before the match that in their recent games they haven't scored that many goals. There were some 1-0 wins, of course, as they've had this long unbeaten run and gone to the top of the Premiership again. But they need one now, that's for sure. Well, they had a good opening half an hour. They had chances that I thought they should have scored from. Uh, a bit unlucky, of course, with the Beckham one against the post. And I think the last 10-15 minutes, Chelsea have got the goal and, and have now looked far more settled and Manchester have just been knocked out of their stride. Uh, not forget that in that final a couple of years ago Chelsea had a very good first half they didn't actually score but I remember Peacock hit the bar and then Manchester United came out for the second half and with the help of two penalties it should be said ran away with the match so uh, who knows what might happen here Cole with Lee Cantona oh he's hit the post brilliant effort he Interesting to see how near Hitchcock got to it, actually. But that was very nearly the reply that would have uh, <laughs> been an absolute perfect riposte to what uh, Hullet had done for Chelsea. Just look at that shot from Cantona. Well, it was breathtaking, wasn't it? Uh, really stunning volley. Didn't look as if it was even a half chance, and I don't think Kevin Hitchcock got there anywhere near it. It was uh, outside of the post with him beaten. Stayed in first half, I must say, far more open and entertaining than one could ever imagine. Quite unlike a semi final in many ways, but all the better for it. Now then, look the at that technique at full stretch. I mean, outside of the right foot, beaten and relief from the goalkeeper. Well, the, <laughs> the Dutchman has been deadly. The Frenchman has been foiled, but only by the post. Now, Mark Hughes is penalised this time. That was a foul on Gary Neville. Just a point, Trevor, if there is time to discuss it, whether if Bruce or Pallister had been playing, I know it's hypothetical, whether the marking in that uh, penalty area when Chelsea scored would have been any tighter. Anyway, here's Cantona. He sort of broke very quickly on the left, Hughes, and I, I think, I mean, this is the, the volley, though. I mean, to, to control it when you're off balance and at full stretch such as that was, was fantastic skill. Yeah, no, Hughes breaking on the left. I think Lee Sharp, of course, is playing left-back today, and uh, he would have been the covering player, but I think he was pushed up when they try and play their flat-back four and get the offside decision, but it didn't come, of course. Let's not take anything away from Chelsea. 
They took the chance when it was offered. Here's Sharp to Giggs. He can play on there. Erlan Jonsson made a second challenge. So stoppage time at the end of the first half. And there will be some for the injury to Steve Clark, who has gone off. Jonsson taking his place. but there's no sort of complex when they play Manchester United. They've had good results against them two or three times in recent seasons, including a draw when Dennis Wise scored at Old Trafford earlier this season. And Glenn Hoddle's message that they must play their own game and not be phased by that of Manchester United seems to have been carried out to the letter in this first half. This is Gary Neville. But here's Beckham, and Cole couldn't reach it, Biggs wasn't quite ready to come in on it, and uh, they were left looking at each other. He boos around the ground, Roy Keane's challenge at the, towards the corner of the 18-yard box. It's Dewberry now playing in the wider position. Keane, Spencer. Goes up from the Chelsea supporters. The London team lead at half time. And Rude Hullet has created so much attention this season, but he created a distraction in the Manchester United defence when he scored that goal. They weren't quite sure where he was, and Alex Ferguson and Steve Bruce might well reflect that the back four were caught out by the move, which somewhat inevitably or ironically was set up by none other than the man who won three cup winners medals with United now Glenn Hoddle's player Mark Hughes half time in the semi-final at Villa Park Chelsea won Manchester United nil well this is fun Woodwork three Gullit one what more do you want fantastic <laughs> first half there brilliant game yeah brilliant. I think some of the team play has been very good some of the individual play has been breathtaking Manchester United had the first 25 minutes, Chelsea have had the last 20 minutes. United have been very good in the break, but I just feel at times they're pushing up a little bit further than they want to. Gullit could have been in two or three times, and they'll have to watch that, but it's all to play for. Yeah, but he's played with wonderful style, apart from getting the goal, Jim. Indeed he has. I mean, just to go back to that pitch, it isn't easy for either side on that pitch to produce the kind of football that they produce today. They do so well on it, first class, It's yeah. a, ve a very enjoyable first half, and a credit to both teams in the circumstances. And they played it fairly, you know, so that part of it has been good for football. But Hullet uh, and um, also Cantona have been something else. I mean, it's, it's what we should be aiming for. Real quality, yeah, eh? Course. Real quality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. I think the other player is Jubilee for Chelsea has been exceptional. Because he's 20, yeah. 21 years of age, yeah. isn't he? And he played with he's, wonderful composure. Well, that's right. He's playing as one of the three centre-backs, but he's coming forward well and he's picking up. We had that shot that hit the bar. Yeah. Nothing seems to phase him. This is the semi-final of the cup and he's just strong yeah. through it. Yeah. Now, good. the goal almost came out of nothing, didn't it? Um, didn't you well, feel? Yes, it did. I mean, uh, you... you Chelsea had had uh, fewer chances, um, but this was a little tussle with Hughes. He got free on the left-hand side, but it's the quality of that cross Great under cross. pressure which really sets it up for Gullit. I mean, he, Schmeichel nearly got his hand to it, even in the end. Yeah. Yeah, well, this is just typical Mark Hughes. He gets the first ball, and it's, you know, he chests it down. He's under pressure there from Philip Neville, but he turns, miscontrols that one. And it's a tussle. Now, you might say, did he barge his way through? I think it's just typical, aggressive Mark Hughes. It was a foul, I, That was an absolute foul. foul. If that's typical, foul. aggressive... Now, give him credit here for a lovely left foot cross. I mean, that was beautiful. But it was a foul and should not have been a goal. Yeah, Let's make that quite clear. Well, you're making that quite clear. I would say that times referees would have given a foul there. Other times they wouldn't have given it. I think he was just typical, aggressive Mark Hughes. Whether His elbow would... comes out and he... He barges his way through. Uh, Alan, 
the case is not accepted. Oh, well, not by you. <laughs> well, that's what they're all they're saying at home yeah. over the lunch. Yes. The, the... I, I'll tell you what, I've seen them given, you yeah. know, and I've seen them let, let Hughes away with it. Well, they got away with yeah. it that well, time. Away with it, but, yeah. the, we... but as you say, the cross was perfect. Yeah. Great cross. And yeah. a, a good, it had, miss it. had nothing miss it. to do. Yeah, nothing, nothing to do. But he had Just played. arrive at the back post and head it in. Huh? Just arrive at the back post and nod it in. Now, you were saying halfway through the half what a wonderful game Keane was, was, uh, was having out there. He was breaking everything down for, well, for Manchester Yeah, United. I thought that, that, that him and Bot worked very hard in the middle of the park, and when they weren't in possession, they weren't hard to get it back. And when they got it, they just broke it devastating pace, as they yeah. do four or five players, and they just, they just go for it. Yeah. But always with the ball under control. United got off to a wonderful start almost, didn't they, with Beckham? Oh. I thought he was a bit unlucky here. I think the crossing is great. Good chest down from Giggs, pings it in, and Beckham just strokes it, comes back off the post, Hitchcock beaten to the world. Actually, it was a superb cross. I mean, just to drive this in to beat the near defenders, actually, he did well to get in that position. And I think, I hate to disagree with you twice, Alan, but I think he actually tried that. <laughs> you tried <laughs> mind disagreeing with him with twice. No, no, he, well, he, he tried what? Like, he, yeah. tried, he actually tried it. It, wasn't, it didn't catch him by surprise. Oh, he actually laid it. it. I said he stroked it. He oh, he stroked it. it. I'm sorry. Yeah. You're, <laughs> you're enjoying this at home? Yeah. It's good, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Now, Giggs had a header just after that, didn't he? And, and really, easy to say from here, but should have done better. Well, I'll let Jimmy cliche. go first, and then I'll yeah. disagree well, with him. <laughs> a header? I mean, he did wonderfully well to get up, and really, it was a weak header. I mean, to be, you know, oh, to be wait, critical. I'm, I'm going to have to agree with that, Jim. What? <laughs> I'm going to have to agree with that. <laughs> it was a good cross, gave him a wonderful chance, and lacks power finally. Uh, this is this is the call here. I think Actually, he does well to come in at the back post, yeah, but I yeah. think if it had been Eric Cantona at the back post, he might have scored. He gets well, yeah. you know, he gets above Clark, but no power on the header at all. That was a good move by Cole there, but he's been hasn't he been largely he, ineffective again? One or two nice touches, one or t once or twice it's bobbled up, but the, the most amazing thing in a game like this where there's been lots of chances, yeah. he hasn't had a chance, has he? Doesn't be frightening anybody, I, does it? I think he's the man who might turn the match back in United's favour because uh, once he'd done one or two duff things early on, which he did, he looked lacking in confidence, I think he suddenly shook himself right. and said, you know, I've got to do something today to reach the Chelsea chance coming up, Jim. Yeah. Yes, this, this was, was uh, Clark's lot. Clark. And again, he, he made his mark before he went off, unluckily, but a nice little one-two here. Pull it again behind it, builds everything up round him. And there, have a little lob over the backside. Smichael's a tall goalkeeper, as you'd find, and I think he would have been beaten by that. A little uh, lob over the backside, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> over the back post, yeah, yeah, thank sure. you. Back post. A lot of success down this side. The goal came from the left-hand side, but they have had a lot of success down this side. I think he's a little bit unlucky there, you know. If it had been a little bit lower, it was in the back of the net. Yeah. And then there was that man, uh, well, we'll see him in just a second yeah. or two, but you, you've been saying how composed he's been looking, this Jubri. I mean, he's only come into the game, really, this season, hasn't he, in yeah. the first team? Anyway. Remarkable right. for a young player. Defensively sound, very sound, yeah. but, you know... It gets forward nicely gets forward, as well. Gets forward well on this occasion. And yeah. He seems just to stroll forward here. He's you know, and then the United defends back off, he cuts inside, you know, lots of space. And I mean, that's a terrific left foot shot that, again, Schmeichel's beaten to the world. What a goal that Deserved the goal, deserved the goal. goal. That was, I mean, it is wonderful to see a young player with that athleticism and skill too. Lovely height, but he aimed that. You could see that he meant it. You know, it was no question of just aimless cross. One, one of the few occasions that the United midfield didn't go him quickly. You know, the, the wonderful one of the thing you mentioned about Gullet and yeah. Cantona, the wonderful thing about them to watch them is that they always seem to have time when they're yeah. playing. Yeah. Well, whatever yeah. the situation the they're players. in, Mark of the Great. Simon Space. Mark those. And then when, when they've got, I mean, it's just, they, they just seem to stroke the pass. And, I had the, the technique is fantastic. Canton had a little quiet spell, but then you can never, you know, can never that's, keep him quiet. That's, that's, when that's, dangerous. Dangerous. No. that's when he's dangerous. As Trevor yeah. said, the technique here is fantastic. He's on the stretch, you know, 20 yards out, volleys it. And again, very unlucky at the post. That, that took uh, Trevor's breath away, we heard during the commentary, because he was leaning away from it and still had to get it exactly where he wanted. There's not many players in the English game who's going to hit that first time. No. You know, wonderful straight. skills. Yeah, yeah, wonderful terrific. skills. Great but one of, yeah. one of the benefits to someone like Dubarry playing in the Chelsea side is to have Gullit with him, because he will dare to do things 
maybe now that he wouldn't have done, he wouldn't have seen done before Kulik came into the dressing room. Yeah. It's all go this weekend. Well, the Grand National and the Cup semi-final. I'm personally yeah. exhausted. Fulham winning Did yesterday. I mean, it's oh, yeah, I know. So I, was, here we go. I was watching Fulham win 4 0 yesterday. Did you <laughs> yes, back yes. the winner? Yes, yes, no. <laughs> no. We <laughs> must pause for a moment because we're going to relax ourselves here for a second or two, and uh, we're going to enjoy yesterday's Premiership Games highlights. Two relegation dogfights were the highlight of yesterday's programme. Colin Todd issued Bolton with a simple solution, win or we're out of it. After 92 seconds, Division 1 beckoned. Quinn. A pressing start for Gavin Ward. Beaten before he's touched the ball. Stubbs. Churchich uses Brightwell as a wall. McGinley! Sinclair. Often at his best in tight situations like this. He's away from Nielsen. Space opening up and in the end a good save, but only as far as Brevet and even Bernali can't keep it out of the Southampton net. Gallant. Sinclair. Oh, good play. Chance for De Keo here. He's taken it on and he's finished it beautifully. Donald's prodigious clearance. Into which Gallon is running. The keeper hesitated. Oh, what an awful error by Dave Besant. For Coventry, these are nervy times for all, but a goal early on should have calmed them, and they don't come much better. Dion Dublin's finish had quality stamped all over it. Sadly, their second-half display had relegation written all over it. Spurs equalised with a mad scramble of a goal from man of the moment Teddy Sheringham. This was his 24th goal of the season. Goal number two confirmed that Coventry's defence just isn't good enough under pressure. Rule Fox's strike, though, was stinging and unstoppable. The mood of the Sky Blues turned darker when Spurs rattled in their third. Chris Armstrong's cool pass was beautifully converted by Fox for his second. It also keeps Spurs in touch with Europe, Coventry may be going in another direction. It's not been a good season for Leeds and it's been a terrible year for Middlesbrough. Something had to give. It was Leeds who gave Middlesbrough a penalty. Lucas Radarby fouling Nick Barmby. Graham Kavanagh shimmied. John Lukic went the wrong way. Leeds know that route rather well. The Leeds week, though, should have been rounded off with some cheer. Jason Blunt's cross forced Derek White to bundle Brian Dean onto the deck. Then the Leeds skipper Gary McAllister gifted Middlesbrough a rare win with a bad penalty miss. No jeers for Howard Wilkinson, but a clear-out expected at the end of the season. Wimbledon took a giant step to safety with another priceless goal from Dean Holdsworth. Alan Kimball's corner gave Holdsworth goal number 16. One more victory should ensure safety for the Premiership's most dogged fighters. At Ewood Park, a battle for a European place on the menu. Certainly not the dismissal of £3 million debutant Gary Flitcroft. This after just three minutes for use of the arm. Everton's goals were all in the last 20 minutes. Daniel Amakachi got the first, courtesy of bad defending from the corner. The second just had to come from Andrei Konchelskis. He'd tormented Rovers all afternoon with another virtuoso performance. Everton's third and Konchelskis' second confirmed his status as a hero with the Goodison Park faithful, coolly lobbing Tim Flowers. It's a result which takes Joe Royal's men a step closer to Europe. Yesterday's games. Now, can I ask you to look out for a special programme this coming Good Friday? It's called the Essential Olympics. Because I know Ben Johnson. Human beings cannot turn things on and off. The next four and a half minutes could change the rest of my life. A minute's time, it's all going to be over. If you don't see anyone, then you realise it's how you've fallen over. <laughs> or you're in front.
That's on Friday. I hope you'll join us for that special program. Now here, if you're just tuning in, something of an upset possibly on the cards. Chelsea leading Manchester United by a goal to nil, scored by Ruud Gullit. Super goal it was. Now, what have United got to do in the second half? Have they got to change anything round? No, I think they'll play exactly the same way. Yeah. You know, and they'll, they'll just hope for a little bit break of the ball, around about the six-yard area. I think that when they're breaking, they'll break as decisively as they've done. I think, as Jimmy says, Cole's got to come into it somewhere. Yes. He's got to be the main goal scorer. He's got to get a chance. And when it comes along, he's got to take it. As far as Chelsea are concerned, don't sit back too far. You know, they've still got to get, get men forward and, and have an outlet, Hughes is that outlet, and bring people into the game and create some chances. So Chelsea can't just sit back and defend that lead, Jim, under any circumstances. They've got to pose a threat at themselves yeah. as well, yeah? Yeah, indeed. Yeah. It, well, in fact, it's probably the best way to defend the league, to try and play it in your opponent's half, rather than say... Uh, oh, let's stay back there and keep plenty of people back. Because, um, you know, nobody really enjoys doing that anyway, but there is a tendency to try and hold on to what you've got. And that would be dangerous, I think, in terms of tactics. Yeah. OK, we'll see what happens in this uh, second half. Let's join, once again, Trevor Brooking and John Motson. Now then, Andy Cole. Five games without a goal. They would dearly love him to end that spell now, wouldn't they? And if, if he didn't, just wonder...